Here's an example Nyquist plot. Let's look at our transfer function. 1 over s plus 10 times s plus 2 quantity squared. So we'll, I want to look at how do we construct this Nyquist plot. So we're going to have eventually a series gain, k, series gain k, and the feedback loop will be a unity feedback loop. So gain is going to the gain k is going to be before the controller, and then our feedback is going to have a gain of minus 1. So for what range of k in the real numbers is the closed loop controller stable? So let's look for example at what happens as we take some frequency omega and take that omega and make it to approach zero. So then we substitute zero in for the omegas in the transfer function, take the absolute value, and it's one over forty. So one over forty is the gain at omega equals zero. The angle is zero at omega equals zero. So you can see this by checking that the sign is positive. So we have one over a positive value. So that's an angle of zero. So as we let omega trend to infinity, we see that we have one over infinity. So the gain is zero. And the angle is one over j infinity times j infinity squared. I'm being a little loose with the notation here and the concept of infinity. So this works out to be 1 over minus j infinity. So minus j is an angle of minus 90, but it's in the denominator. So this gives us an angle, GOL, of 90 degrees as omega tends to infinity. So where is g of j omega only real? This is going to tell us where we cross on the left-hand side of sigma equals a negative number and j omega equals to 0. Sigma may also be a positive number. Okay, so let's check. Where is g of j omega real? So now we take our original transfer function, g of j omega, and I'm going to multiply through the denominator. So j omega plus 10 times minus omega squared plus j4 omega plus 4. So that's expanding the right term in the denominator. So now let's multiply through the j omega plus 10, and we get minus j omega cubed minus 4 j omega squared, or minus 4 omega squared because the two j's become a minus 1, plus j omega 4, so that multiplies the j omega through times the 3 term polynomial, and now we're going to multiply the 10 through times the 3 term poly polynomial, minus 10 omega squared plus j 40 omega plus 40. So now let's combine all of our terms, the j terms and the real terms. So first of all we can see that uh, some of these omega squareds we can simplify, so the minus 4 omega squared minus 10 omega squared will make minus 14. The plus 40 we'll put over here on the left too. And now we add all the j terms. So 44 omega minus omega cubed, because we factored the j out. And so we now have, now have 1 over a real plus an imaginary. And so if we set the imaginary equal to zero, that can happen at omega equals to zero. And it can happen at omega squared equals 44, or omega equals the square root of 44. So the gain at the square root of 44, which is the omega that's going to give us gain and then an angle of either zero or minus 180, the gain at j of square root of 44 is 1 over 576. So we can just plug that into the equation and come up with 1 over 576. The angle at j square root of 44 is 180 degrees because we have 1 over a negative number, so it's minus 180. So now we can start to sketch our transfer function. Oh, and we can also check where is g of j omega only imaginary. All right, so I'm going to actually skip that part. Okay, so now let's sketch the Nyquist based on the values that we've already come up with. So we know that as omega tends to zero, we have a gain of 1 over 40 and an angle of zero. So that puts us, the, puts us at this point. We know that we will also cross the real axis at minus 1 over 576. So when this happens, we know that our angle is minus 180. So 1 over 576 at an angle of minus 180 is minus 1 over 576. And so, if we plotted a few of the intermediate values by adding, uh, by checking omega tending from zero to infinity, 
we would see a bunch of points along this line that would give us this sort of spiral-shaped trajectory. So we head in in this direction. And by symmetry, we get the opposite shape over here, as omega tends from infinity all to all the way to minus j infinity, and then we go from minus j infinity back up to zero. So that direction heads back this way. So here's omega zero, omega greater than zero. We know that omega is the square root of 44. That's where we cross at minus 1 over 576. And by the way, omega equals the square root of 20 over 7. That is where we cross over the imaginary axis. Well, that's the calculation I skipped. And then omega tending towards infinity, we get closer and closer to the origin. And then omega less than zero, because by now we've looped back, and we'll see that when we draw our, our sketch here. So this is our original sketch, right? So we started at the origin, moved up to j infinity, looped all the way around to j minus infinity, and came back up. So the number of poles that we have inside is equal to zero. So we haven't encircled any poles in the right-hand plane. So as a consequence, we want to make sure that we don't encircle any poles in our Nyquist plot. So the number of zeros that we, that we expect to encircle is also zero. So if we start with k equals minus 1, then we have to make sure that we do not encircle the point minus 1, which we don't here, because we encircle only minus 1 over 576. So we can use those values to calculate how will we be stable. So for stability, we cannot encircle minus 1 over k. We, if you remember that from the previous lectures. So that's our stability, stability criterion. So you can actually sort of look here that we have minus 1 over k and minus 1 over 576. That tells you about whether or not, or about what your maximum value for k is going to be. So minus 1 over 576 has to be greater than minus 1 over k. And as we change the value of k, the point that we cannot encircle is going to move closer and closer to the origin. But we also have to make sure that minus 1 over k is not looped by 1 over 40. So we could choose other gain values that are sort of over here, right? We could choose gain values over here, but that would also result in instability for some of the system, uh, for some ranges. And so we have to make sure that minus 1 over k is not encircled by this loop found in minus 1 over 40 as well. So when we look at both of these, we can reverse minus 1 over 576 should be less than 1 over k by removing the minus signs. And then that inequality will revert again. So k has to be less than 576 after we divide through uh, by the inverse of each. And likewise, k has to be greater than minus 40. So that is our stability criterion. Minus 40 less than k, less than 576. So that gives us all the values of k in the real numbers. If we were just looking for k greater than 0, then we would have 0 less than k, less than 576. But the, the problem asks for all k in the real numbers. So by the way, if we choose k equals to 576, and we plug this back into our characteristic equation delta of s with series gain k, and we multiply through all of the various polynomials, s cubed plus 14s squared plus 44s plus 616, I guess. So now if we solve for this, we have 0 plus or minus j 6.63, so that is our point of marginal stability. So this is exactly where we cross the j omega axis at k equals 576. So that's a quick sanity check to make sure that we've chosen the right value of k.